for those who know, at least me personally, at least for those who know me personally, um, I never indulge in politics. I never indulge in anything like that. My, that's never my calling. But the um, Bible said that um, even the old is a saying, I said, not speaking in the face of evil is evil itself. So you choosing not to speak um, in the days when things are going bad is bad itself. And there's an issue going on right now, especially in Nigeria, which that's why I'm choosing to speak today, uh, where they're saying end SARS, stop SARS, reform Nigeria, reform the Nigerian police. Um, these are things that are actually happening. And to be honest, brothers and sisters, we might say we are in North America and we do not need to concern ourselves with things like that. But that would be a lie. If any man says that I am in North America, I don't need to concern myself with the affairs in Nigeria, that man, it just shows how ignorant and, and how myopic that person is. Nehemiah was serving before the king. If you're thinking of anyone that was living a life of fulfillment, it should be Nehemiah. And yet... When he remembers what was going on in Jerusalem, the Bible said he was grieved to his heart. The Bible said in the book of Nehemiah, chapter 2, verse 3, he said, But I said to the king, May the king live forever. Why should my face not look sad when the city where my ancestors are buried lies in ruins and the gates have been dest destroyed by fire? I remember going back to Nigeria some few years back, about two years ago, and I could not even take my wife to Kanu, a place where I grew up. It would be my joy to show her my, the first home we lived in, the home I grew up in, to show her the school I attended and the road I walk every day to school so she can have an, an idea. But because of the unsettling things in, Af in Nigeria at the time, I could not go there. And it is sad that things, those such things are happening. And I can tell you the situation in Nigeria needs a reformation. And that's why even as believers, we are praying. Today, we'll be taking some prayer points to pray for Nigeria. The Bible said in the book of 2 Timothy, it said that I urge you that prayer should be made for kings and those in authority. So we'll be praying for Nigeria. The Bible said also in the book of, it said, pray for, this, for the uh, place which you have been carried off to as captives. For the peace thereof, you shall receive peace. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. He said, yeah, he has set watchmen over the city. And I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Let's just open our Bibles to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 4. I want to read verse 1 and read verse 13 and 16. The thing is this. In, uh, about some few months ago, there was the issue of the Black Lives Matters. And I can tell you, it is no different than what is happening right now in Nigeria. The same brutality, the same excessive power that has been exercised in North America by uh, the police over the black community. It's the same thing that is going on. And the worst of it all is that we are all one in Nigeria. We are all, we, at least we, there's no white and no black. And yet, the SARS are not killing people based on tribe and religion. They're killing people based on God's corruption. But the thing is, the people now say, oh, should, um, should young people be protesting right now? The thing is this, whatever you think is, as, is happening, has happened before in the Bible. Let's open our Bible to Ezekiel chapter 4. I read from verse 1 because of our time. I'm just going to take five minutes. He said, Again I looked and I saw the oppression that was taking place under the sun. I saw the tears of the oppressed and there were no comforter. People was on the... Uh, power was on the side of their oppressor and they have no comforter. Nigeria right now is in a state where the people who are crying have no one to comfort them. Why? The people who are oppressing them are the ones that actually have the same power. If you read Ezekiel chapter, uh, chapter 5, it said that, um, verse, um, let's read that passage. Um, let's open our Bibles to Ezekiel chapter 5. That's one passage I had where he talked about the, 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 that the oppression is going on. I think verse 13. If you're there, you can read for us, please. Verse 8. If you see the poor oppressed in a district. Yes. And justice and rights denied. Yes. Do not be surprised at such things. He says, do not be surprised at such things. For one official is hired by a higher one. Brothers and sisters, the reason why there's so much oppression is because the one that you're seeing at the smaller level is actually still going on at the higher level. The same way you are complaining that somebody is harassing you and killing you, likewise somebody at the top is also harassing those ones too. Go on. And over them... And over, both, yes, and over them both, there's still. another higher one. Go on. The increase from the land is taken by all. And all the profit of the corruption is taken by the king himself. So the king himself profits from the field. The king himself profits from that corruption. 
the reason Nigeria is still in this state is because even the leaders themselves are profiting from even the things that is happening right now. They themselves are the ones profiting from That's why it is not ending. They know the thieves. They know the robbers. Even Sani Buari, General Sani Buari, who is late right now, said if there's any insurgents, if there's any terrorists in any country, the government knows about it. And if it does not curb it within 24 hours, it's because the government himself wants to allow it to be there. The thing is this, the corruption is so deep that it's actually being sustained by those at the top. If a, if a SARS uh, official should shoot someone and is reported to the, to the senior uh, personnel, if the senior personnel is not corrupt, that person will be fired that same day. But because they are all together, that's why it's being sustained. And I pray to the God of heaven we help us in Jesus' name. Verse 13, well, I'm going to read uh, Vish, uh, is Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 13 to 16. Because some of us might say, you know, why is this youth, why are they uh, revolting and why are they um, complaining and, and protesting? And the thing is this, even those who are there today got there by their own revolt. The coup by um, all these people uh, was what brought them there today. Buhari was in the regime with um, all these people. And yet, now people are protesting and people are saying, why should they be protesting? Let's read verse 13. It's a better a poor man, but a poor but wise youth than an old, an old but foolish king who, knows no, who no longer knows how to heed a warning. The youth may have come from prison to the kingship or he may have been born in poverty within his kingdom. I saw that all who lived and worked under the sun followed the youth, the king's successor. So you can see that even right now, what is going on in Nigeria, this actually impacts. People are following them. It's been peaceful. It's one of the most peaceful protests I've ever seen in my life. Black Lives Matters happening in, the, in North America, and there was looting, burning of houses, and things like that. But right now, they're protesting even in Nigeria, and yet we never heard of such. We thank God for that, and I pray God will give them the wisdom to keep it like that, not to enter into violence said there was no end to all the people who were before them but those who came later were not pleased with the successor this too is meaningless a chasing after the wind brothers and sisters if you think that your that people after you will not be angry with you you're lying one thing is consistent those who are who are ruling right now will feel like what they're doing is, is good but those who are behind we always say what you've done is wrong and i can tell you if you put new person there even those who are after him again will still say, you've not done well. So, but the thing is this, we need to actually acknowledge these things. And this is where we call on to the government of Nigeria to start thinking straight, to start acting right. He to these people. Let us not be like Rehoboam who lost 10 tribes because he was foolish and he was arrogant and saying, I want to, I want, I want to rule these people by fear. Fear is not what rules people. Let them give you the, your, their allegiance. By their own self. I will be honest with you. Yes, I'm not ignorant. I'm a sociologist, so I understand that we need peace. And if we need peace, we need police regardless, whatever. So whatever the youth say, you can never take the police out of this community. Otherwise, there will be so much chaos and so much trouble. But the thing is this. Even in developed countries, we that are in these developed countries, we know that police are even just on the streets. does not mean they are standing on, on um, the... The junctions. They don't stand at the junction. At least let it be a system. I'm not a politician. I'm not a strategist. So I'm not trying to give the government a strategy. But they can even look at the, the countries which they are, they are always visiting. You, don't, you never see a police with a rifle on the streets. A police that even has his, um, uh, his pistol in his um, holster does not even open it. The day he puts his hand on it, everybody says, we, we write a report and say, that man, when, when the police was coming next to me, he put his hand on his old, he's not even holding the gun, just put his hand on the case of the gun. And that, that itself alone frightens a man. Not to speak of a country where you see people carrying rifle. Because when I visited Nigeria and I saw police holding gun to the end of the air, I'm like, are we in a war torn zone? Are we, in a, are we in a country where they're shooting people? Why should you even have a gun there? If you are anti-robbery, stay in your room. The day there's robbery going on, let them call you and go and attend to the robbery. Not stopping people on the streets and telling them, show me your phone. 
Is that how you know who's a robber? Let the investigation, let, them, let the police investigate. And if they need you, they will call the squad. I pray God we help us in Jesus' name. The government of Nigeria needs to reform the police system. I will tell you, it's very corrupt. And like I said, this corruption is not just here. Like you, uh, we read in Ezekiel chapter 5, it goes on and on. And the, ones, the king himself benefits from it, and that's why he's been sustained. So today we will be praying. Bible says in the book of First Timothy chapter 2 from verse 1 to 2, it says, I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercessions, thanksgiving be made for all people. If, you, if I know, and of course we're not trying to deny the fact that it's very hard to be a leader. Yes, it is very hard. But that's why we're praying that God of heaven will give them wisdom. Because we know that God placed them there. Romans chapter 13 verse 11 says, that let us be subject to the authority because all authority has been given by God. But even in our submission, please let the, even the authority themselves begin to ask, are they doing what God is himself has put them there to do? And I pray God will help us in Jesus. So we're just going to take some few prayer points for Nigeria, and I pray God himself will help us.